50 in the, in the Greek, pente, cost, 49 plus the Passover. So Exodus 32 is exactly where Orthodox Jews were on this day. They celebrate the giving of the law. They say it was at Pentecost, at Shavuot, that Moses received the law. And more than that, that God declared the law to the whole nation. Have you ever heard God's voice audibly? Anybody ever hear that? No? Okay. Have you ever heard the still small voice of the Lord? Okay, now it's really interesting because God rarely speaks audibly, even in the Bible. But this one time, he spoke to the whole nation. In fact, the whole nation were gathered around Mount Sinai, and God declared the Ten Commandments. The whole nation heard it. It was clear. There was no doubt about it. And we're going to examine the Old Covenant versus New Covenant, law versus spirit, because we have two Pentecosts to look at, Shavuot, the giving of the law, and Pentecost in the New Testament, the giving of the Holy Spirit. We will see and compare and contrast these two ideas. Shavuot, the first Pentecost, was the birth of God's covenant people, the nation of Israel. When God gave them the Ten Commandments, He made covenant with them. In fact, from that day on, He said, If you keep my commandments, I will bless you as a nation. Everything you put your hands to do will prosper. I, you will be my people. I will be your God. And you, in fact, we're going to find, He said, You, the whole nation, will be royal priests unto me and represent me to the Gentile nations of the world. That's why God chose Israel. He didn't say, all other nations on earth, you are going to perish because I happen to chose Israel. He said, Israel, you will be my priests and declare my word to the nations. Israel rejected that call. At, the, at Pentecost in the New Covenant, God's New Covenant people became his, and that's the church made up of Jews and Gentiles. In fact, the Bible says it's to the Jew first and to the Greeks and everyone else. The day the Jews celebrate the giving of the law and the church celebrate the giving of the Holy Spirit. So today we're going to examine its significance. And I think we're going to find some really interesting things in contrast between the old covenant and the new, between the giving of the law and the giving of the Spirit. At first, I want to try to define a legalist. Now, you may be a legalist, and I know this is really interesting if, number one, you base your faith journey on rules rather than relationship. There's so many Christians that say, well, I'm a Christian, and I say, well, how do you know? And they say, well, because I don't do this, and I don't do that, and I don't do this. You ever meet a Christian like that? It's all about rules. That's legalism. A real believer, I believe, says, how do you know you're a Christian? Oh, because I love Jesus, and I know he loves me. And that relationship aspect becomes so clear that when we pray, we don't just offer a soliloquy to a God that's out there somewhere, but we are having a dynamic exchange with the holy God, that he hears our prayers. Folks, at Pentecost, that became real. You may be a legalist if you judge others more than examining yourself. You know, the finger pointers. Well, I'm not as bad as that person. <laughs> Remember the publican and the Pharisee? Oh, they both go to the temple. And the publican, this tax collector, this, this evil man falls at the altar and begs for mercy and grace from a holy God. The Pharisee said, thank God I'm not like this publican here. I'm so holy, I fast, I give my tithes, I do all these things. And God said, man, I didn't hear your prayer, but I sure heard that sinner's prayer. You may be a legalist if you confess Christ with your mouth, but not your heart. You see, the Bible says there's a people that worship me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. The giving of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost took away the hardship of the law and gave us that intimacy with God that is profound, that we can know a holy God. You may be a legalist if you think you have to earn God's love or if you have to earn salvation. 
through works rather than faith. You may be a legalist if you're driven by guilt rather than love. I know a lot of churches try to guilt Christians into doing godly things. Problem with that is, if that's your motivation, God doesn't even recognize it. You see, we do godly things because we love God. More than that, because God loves us, and we want to please Him. You may be a legalist if your mind is set on the flesh rather than the Spirit. I want you to know this morning, we all fail, we all make mistakes, we all sin. But the grace of God transcends any sin that you commit. If you're focused on the Spirit, you have that anointing of the Spirit that rests on your heart and your mind. You may be a legalist if you focus on the letter of the law rather than the Spirit of the law. So let's get into it. Here's the clearest example we have of law versus Spirit in the Bible. And I really love that God did this. The first Pentecost, the giving of the law. We know this happened. Moses came down from the mountain in Exodus chapter 32. We're going to get into the text in a minute. And in chapter 32, verse 28, he says, So the sons of Levi did as Moses instructed them. They went out and slayed 3,000 men. Why did they do that? Because 40 days prior to this, God gave them the law. He spoke the Ten Commandments, and 40 days later, they built an idol and began to worship this idol and have a drunken, potentially, orgy. And because of that giving of the law, 3,000 people died. In the New Testament at Pentecost, we have the giving of the Spirit. And in Acts 2.41, we found that after he had preached... And they received the word and were baptized. That's water baptized. That day, there were added about 3,000 souls. I love this compare and contrast. Giving of the law, 3,000 people died. Giving of the Spirit, 3,000 people were saved. Romans chapter 8 verse 3 says, For what the law could not do, weak as it was through the flesh, God did, sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and as an offering for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. So what we find in this compare and contrast is the law kills, but the Spirit gives life. In 2 Corinthians